if you have equal rights, but you're not able to come out of the closet at school or on, in your church or at sport, we still got a lot of things to do. Welcome to We Are DeFree's Perspectives. We have a lot of responsibility. We reach thousands and millions of people through the projects that we're doing. We are a creative agency maximizing the positive impact on businesses, society and our planet. So if you currently look at all communication marketing campaigns, it's not always representing society. Radical change needs to happen now, otherwise brands and companies are going to get left behind. You know, if you're a marketing manager, if you're in a senior position, you're an opportunity maker. So how can you redistribute those opportunities in an interesting way? Every week, founder Mitchell talks to visionaries and change makers who are shaking up the status quo. We create content for every living soul on this planet. Get ready to be launched into a new perspective. Richard, welcome. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Can you give a little uh, introduction to yourself? Who are you? Well, I'm uh, Lucien uh, Spey. I'm uh, born in Amsterdam 52 years ago. I'm very happy and lucky to have that, that my cradle was here in Holland, that it was in Amsterdam. And even better that, that my cradle was in this family where I was born into. In my family, my parents, uh, they were in fashion. So I was always surrounded with uh, gay uh, designers. So when I was coming out of the closet, there was no problem at all. And uh, so for me, that um, gave me the feeling that um, I had to do something for people who are not that privileged to be able to come out of the closet. So you grew up in Amsterdam uh, in a really open-minded, fashion-surrounded family. How did that go? Well, um, in the beginning, you know, we were always up front. Uh, trendsetter, so my parents dressed up, uh, dressed us up with fashion that was not fashion yet. So we didn't feel too comfortable because we said we always we are always different than the rest in the school. But then my father said, "Well, you'll see. Next year, everybody wants to wear that." But I said, "You want to be part of somebody." But that also gave us all, also my brothers, um, that we were um, used of being different than the rest. Maybe we are different, but being gay or being, it's, a, it's more challenge. It gives us other challenge, but um, it's always, a, I would never change my life or anything. If I could choose, I would be born again as gay. It's because it's who you are yeah. and you don't become it. And I'm happy who yeah. I am. And I've, that's what, that's done by your parents. They give you the feeling that you can be who you are and be proud of that. Did you feel comfortable at school? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, in my school, in, in, in the South, it, uh, the Europa School, we were all mixed up, uh, Jewish, Japanese, Indonesian. So uh, in all my schools, I was already used to be surrounded with a diverse group of people. Mm -hmm. My first time in my life that I was only with Dutch people was when I go, went to the Harlem Business School when yeah. I was 23. Then there was only Dutch people. And I was like, this is boring. <laughs> What did you study after? I always thought that I was going to end up working for a company like Mars, Nestle, or Heineken, whatever. Yeah. And I did. Uh, after that school, I went to work for Nestle. and uh, But then I found out I was number 350,000. And there was nothing nice on that because marketing, I thought, because they have chocolate, for example, the nuts, the, the lion. And you see all these... Uh, um, uh, commercials, and you think you're working for a very modern, open-minded company, but it was really a gray black tie company. So I did that only for a half a year, and then I ended up working for a field marketing company. That was very nice, because that's where I was account manager for hospitality and events, and then uh, ending up um, working for H Fonds, uh, doing um, the Fonds Werfing. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you say that in English, but to uh, get some funding, and um, well, I did that for five years. And then um, somebody, my duty called in the Belmer because a friend of mine, she was the director of the LOC, and she said, I can't find marketing uh, professors. Could you become a professor at the school in the Belmer? And you know how the children are there. So I ended up being a, a marketing uh, professor at the LOC. So I did that, and then, then duty called in another way, because somebody offered me a really good uh, uh, position in 
parliament as a personal assistant of uh, a parliamentarian. And when the financial um, crisis came, I thought, like, well, I have enough money on the bank now. I want to do something for society. And I was w w um, looking for a voluntary job. And in that year, I went for the first time. That was in 2009 to the uh, Pride in Amsterdam. And I was like, wow, even in summertime, this is, this is really great. And I just sent a letter with 10 recommendations. I said, if you want to improve your festival, here are 10 points for free. If you want more, just call me and I will come around. So in two months later, I was in the board of the Pride. And I did that for like half a year. And then there was a problem. So I went out of the board and become the executive producer in 2012. 2014 is when I became <laughs> the director of the Pride. Now I'm still there. So what is it that your role really is at the moment? Um, that other people can flourish. You know, we're at the office, we make thousands of flowers flourish. So the people, because we are a foundation, but we are not an organization with members. We're not a membering organization, so we don't represent anybody. What we do is that other organizations who do represent com uh, communities or parts mm -hmm. of our community can be on that stage. So we make the stage, or sometimes I compare it with a uh, Christmas tree. We are the plain Christmas tree, and everybody is allowed to put their balls in it and make it uh, the Christmas tree that we all know. So you're basically a collection, like you're, you're the umbrella above a collection of uh, lots of different organizations to bring it all together that operates then for... What we do is we, we facilitate. So we facilitate for people that, for example, last uh, summer, we didn't have the opportunity to go on the boat, but we, we, do have, we, we, we had a demonstration within the Concertgebouw. Mm -hmm. We asked everybody from all these organizations if they wanted to speak, and it was live on television. So we take care that they are being heard. So you're basically the, the Pride Amsterdam organization facilitates the communities. Yeah, that's right. In, for example, 2014, uh, one of the first we are one of the first prides in the world that have a real trans pride, but it's organized by the trans community, and uh, because I don't know what they what what, what trans people need, mm -hmm. but they need a, a, a license and they need money. So that's what I can do for them. Yeah. We can do what pride can do for them. Yeah. But the um, the content of their the things yeah. that they have to do it themselves. How do you make sure that that Amsterdam keeps Innovating, being innovative in a lot of ways um, comes from our um, wanting to be good for our planet. We have a very an, 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 um, um, how you say do something sustainable sustainability program, and in 2025 we have to be 100 percent CO2 neutral. Do you consider yourself like you work for such a big uh, or an organization with such a big impact? Well. Um, even if in the smallest city, in, in the smallest local paper, you will find stories about the only gay in the village during Pride. So during our summer, during Pride, Pride Month, um, the story and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the message is getting all around. And we were, let's what we say, we were like a carnival, but now we are really a, a movement with a message. And, and what we use, our big... Festival is to get the, the 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 stories of our ambassadors for the media, and that's that's helping especially uh, youngsters that's looking at the television and they're in the closet and afraid to get out to see that it's only getting better. Because in this parade, people sometimes um, are against companies participating in our parade, but it also shows that when you come out of the closet, you still can do everything. While when you look only at Veronica inside, you think that you can only be a hairdresser. No, you can still join the army. You can still be a policeman or you go uh, a technician with a Vodafone. Um, what is, why is it so urgent and why is it so important that Pride still exists? You know, what you see can't be ignored. And Pride is there to show because every gay and every lesbian, everybody struggled when they came out because the first accept, acceptance is with yourself. You have to accept who you are and then you can flourish. So we show them already examples of how it can be. And this big, the bigger the, the, the impact, more interesting is this for, for uh, the, the, the international media, the national media. Do you think Pride and, and your organization 
helps making uh, the city or the world a more equal place? Well, yes, I, uh, I, I truly believe that. But it's more important that we show these youngsters that are still in the closet that they're not the only one and that it's that they are able to come out and when they have a struggle that they that we are there for them to help them and um, so we make especially the world a better place for them so that's important for so, our people for our brothers and sisters but we still got 73 countries to go where being gay is still punishable and even 10 countries where you can uh, be uh, locked up for life or the death penalty so we still got a lot to do there are a lot of threats in the world how do you protect our freedom with pride? Well, there are uh, some of uh, groups that don't think that we should be alive. And, and they had some threats, but that we, we've seen in 2016. And 20% um, didn't dare to show up for pride, but people who were never coming did show up. So at the end, we had more visitors. And people were asked, why did you come? And they said, well, to let them see that we don't go back into the closet and we are uh, for freedom of speech and freedom to be who we are and to love who we want. Equality, that's what it's all about. What brings the future? Well, um, the near future, in, in like a few years, we'll still be going with boats and um, we still be fighting for equal rights. And we are, by, 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 by law, we are equal, but we still have to fight for our emancipation, you know. Um, if you have equal rights, but you're not able to come out of the closet at school or on, in your church or at sport, the, the, we still got a lot of things to do. So the first f soccer player needs to come out of the closet. and um, Professional. Sorry. Professional, sorry. We are now having, our, since di this year, um, the Religious Pride Committee, and there's also getting there. So few steps. The Pope just said that, who am I to judge? And he said to the Catholic Church, don't exclude gays, get them in and make them also able to have relationships within the church. So we are making steps, small steps, but we're making them. Change is happening. Change is going to come and change is happening. Lucien, thank you very much for being here. Thank yeah, you very weird. much. We can't for... shake hands, but for, for being on board and uh, to have this great conversation with you. Um, it was a pleasure. I think we can take a, take a lot from it and uh, it's really inspiring to speak to you. So thanks again. Thank you.